side. And, okay, uh, Mike. When you get so, to yes. So my favorite is tomatoes. Um, what I like to grow is tomatoes and and some basil and some jalapeno peppers and um, and actually I take some pasta, cold pasta, and I uh, and I put some salad dressing on it and that is like lunch for me and I love it. So if I want to save my tomato seeds, right? What do I do? I've now I've got my tomato on the kitchen counter. What do I do? Well, um, pretty much it needs to be ripe, of course. Um, you're going to essentially mush it up into a mush. Um, that's, that tomato then is going to be put in, with, in a container, an open-lidded container, um, with a little bit of water. And you essentially let that sit out in the warm, warm weather for two to three days. And while it's sitting out there during that time, it's going to get the nastiest-looking, slimy-looking <laughs> gunk on the top of it. And um, what it's doing is actually fermenting, and it's fermenting and it's killing um, the outside seed coating. That uh, and, and it's just, it's starting its preparation to save itself. I guess the easiest way to save it, mm-hmm. say it. And so then you just uh, scrape off the, the gunky stuff, and uh, say the seed that's only on the bottom. You know, the seed that only sinks is the only stuff that's good. You'll take that out, let it dry at room temperature for a couple days on a paper plate or a tray or whatever, and then put it in some type of sealed container. Um, I don't recommend freezing seed because, you know, you can freeze it and crack it. Um, Even, you know, you can't even see it and any cracked seed's bad then. But uh, then it'll store in your refrigerator or your cellar. The key thing is keep it dry, keep it dark, and keep it cool. Mike? You do those three things, and it'll last for a pretty good amount of time. Mike, uh I've seen a lot of people just take tomato seeds and they'll, they'll, they'll scoop them out of the tomato with, let's say, a spoon and they'll be very careful and they'll put them on a paper towel and they'll put them out in the sun. Is that an acceptable method? Because that's completely different from what you talked about by mashing it up and putting it in a bowl and putting it outside and letting it get nasty. No, the, you need to have that fermentation process go on. Um, there is, it, it, I, I don't want to get really into the scientific side too much because it's kind of technical, unless you really, really want no, to. No, no, we don't but need to do that. essentially that fermentation process is necessary for to the seeds to save themselves, um, to burn off that um, any germ coatings or anything like that, and it's just the natural way of getting them prepped. Well, it sounds like most of us have been doing it the wrong way for years and years and years. So will this work with watermelon seeds and, um, oh, let's, how about apple seeds? Will it work with, with apples too? Well, fruit seed is probably a little bit different. Um, you know, apples and things uh, need to be grafted and, you know, into root stock. I mean, there's a lot of things in that. Um, that enter in. On the watermelon side, um, there's maybe just a little bit of difference. You save the seed, you'd wash the seeds off in a, um, oh, a mild dishwashing soap uh, mixture, and then you'd let the seeds dry and you'd store them the same way. Um, everything's pretty similar. Um, tomatoes are kind of the only exception where you go through the fermentation side. You know, you can do that with the watermelon. Um, the same thing, let it, the, the seed will sink. Um, the same thing, and that's what I always do. I always use the water technique. Okay. So when you say uh, mild soap, do you mean soap or do you mean detergent or do you mean both? Well, like dishwashing soap, you know, Dawn, you know, something that's okay. really mild. You know, um, it's just something that will cut into that uh, sugar coating that's, uh, uh, that's, in this, uh, that's surrounding the seed. That when you, know, you eat a watermelon, it's kind of a slick uh, sugary coating, so it just gets that off of it and cleans up a little bit of the uh, all the residues and stuff that are on it. Okay. One thing that I would I wanted to mention about you know you talking about seed saving, um, it is necessary for folks, and it isn't that hard to do. I mean, I was going to ask you and Mark, um, you you guys have probably heard of that Svalbard um, Global Seed Vault in Norway. Oh, sure, we have. Yeah. You know. W- my question is, you know, they just did that. They just opened that up in uh, February of 2008, last a uh, couple years ago. You know, after many, many years of uh, litigation, I guess type stuff, and you know, it's storing over 500,000 varieties of seeds right now. Um, Mike, that is that stuff? is absolutely they, amazing, uh, and I want to take know, the bottom of the hour break, and then we're going to come back and uh, we'll talk about that and and other issues in regards to heirloom seeds. This is Mark Wright. I'm with the original survival columnist. Vincent Finelli, and you're listening to USA Prepares. We'll be right back.
when I'm in Branson, I pick up a copy of the Branson Daily Independent. It's the best red paper in Branson with local, state, and Branson entertainment news, plus the classifieds. And business owners, advertising in the Branson Daily Independent gets results. To advertise, call 417-334-2285. That's 417-334-2285. The Branson Daily Independent. It's the best red paper in Branson, and it's free at over 300 area locations. Are you looking to sell your business? Call Kingsley Group Business Brokers first and maximize the value of your business. We have the most experienced team in the area and we'll work with you and your advisors throughout the process. The results you need, the confidence you trust. Kingsley Group Business Brokers, because experience counts. Call today for a confidential valuation of your business at 889-9400. Visit online at kingsleybrokers.com. Here's news on the Ozarks News Network. Dr. James Kofer has resigned his position as president of Missouri State University. He stays with the university as a full tenured professor of business. His new role begins in the upcoming school year. Dr. Kofer states he's leaving due to the rigors of the everyday schedule. Cliff Smart, general counsel at MSU, begins his role of interim president effective today. Jury selection began today in the wrongful death lawsuit involving attorney Roland Comstock. Comstock was found shot to death in his home in 2007. Criminal charges were never filed, but Comstock's adopted daughter is suing his wife, Alberta, claiming she was the lone shooter. And Baxter County deputies are looking into a shooting just north of Mountain Home, Arkansas. They found 51-year-old Fred Dees on the front porch of the home after a woman called and said she had shot her husband. Dees was taken to the hospital. His wife was treated for injuries and released. For the Ozarks News Network, I'm Arlen Summers. More clouds than sun this afternoon with a thunderstorm or two. It'll be breezy and very warm with a high of 92 degrees. Partly cloudy and humid with a low of 73 tonight. Clouds and sun tomorrow, high 87. A shower or thunderstorm in spots Wednesday. Partly sunny and humid with highs around 90. I'm Mackie Weather Meteorologist Tevis Air. It's 88 degrees at AM 560 KWTO. You're Are you losing your cool? Seaberg's team of ASC certified technicians have the know-how and equipment to get your car cooled down and comfortable at an affordable price. Come in for a quick AC check at one of our two locations, Sunshine just west of Campbell and Commercial at Grant. Check us out on the web at gotoseaberg.com. Rumble, rumble, sputter, your car's a price. Go to Seaberg. Please return to your seats. Class is now in session at usaprepares.com. Interact now by emailing instructor at usaprepares.com or text 417-200-4715. And now, Vincent Finelli and Mark Wright. This is USA Prepares, the radio program. I am Mark Wright, and I'm here with the original survival economist, Vincent Finelli, and we're going to resume our interview with Mike Knox of Heirloom Seeds. Mike, you were talking about saving seeds and the importance and how it's being done on a global scale. Um, we understand that. So let's save our seeds. We've, you've told us a little bit about how to do that. And I guess we can go to your website by uh, going to usaprepares.com and clicking on the link, and that will take us to your website where you can then give us more information about saving seeds. Is that correct? Sure. Okay, yeah. great. Now, you mentioned... Uh, you mentioned high yield gardening at the uh, at the expo and how we can really make a garden grow. Can you give us some hints as to how we can make our garden grow like the pictures that you see? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good question there. Um, yeah, that high yield gardening. You know, for this for our terrain and our geography down here in the Ozarks, you know, what's the one thing that uh, every gardener can grow lots of down here? rocks right yeah right <laughs> and uh yeah go ahead yeah so you're it, right it's just, it's just amazing uh, one of the techniques that i know we've incorporated and i think your group that you're involved with um does a lot of raised bed gardening mm -hmm. um and i think that is a very very viable way to go um, especially in this area um and there's lots of techniques in that um the the great thing about that is you know you can grow so much in just a little space with condensed planting. And uh, you'd really be surprised at how much you can do with that. Um, 
it just saves a lot of labor too, and weeding and tilling and all that stuff. Mike, I, um, I don't have I don't have the first weed in my raised bed gardening, and I am not kidding. There is, what 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 we did was we took we built a border and we uh, we built a raised bed, and then we we used uh, plastic sheeting to protect right. around our raised bed for about a foot and a half on the, around the perimeter. And literally, we don't have any grass in there. We don't have anything growing in our raised bed garden except for what we planted. That's awesome, isn't it? That's a, it's a, really is a great way to go down here in the Ozarks. Um, another thing that I would consider that for most people that don't really realize is a thing called companion gardening. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of things that you grow in your garden, um, and some of those things together do really great. They even benefit one each other. They, they'll help the flavors enhance or that type of thing. Um, but there are some things where you plant next to each other, and they have the totally opposite effect. They'll even maybe pre- uh, prevent the, the vegetable from producing any fruit. Let me give you an example. Um, onions. If you plant your onions next to your beans or peas, you're going to have a negative effect. Um, <laughs> yeah. They do not do well next to each other. Well, let's give us a um, list. The, Mike, let's give us a list. The, Onions and beans, what else is on the uh, do not plant next to each other list? Oh, my, that's, it's a big list. We have that. Uh, like I said, we can get that to any of the people. I was going to give you another couple examples. Um, onions, that those same onions, though, if you plant them next to carrots mm-hmm. or lettuce, they do wonderful. Um, tomatoes work good next to any carrots, tomato, um, onions, radishes do well with lettuce. Um, trying to think. You know, that's interesting you say that because when I was growing up in the 50s and the 60s, the three things that we planted uh, were tomatoes, carrots, and radishes. And they seemed to work really well. Right. Yeah, they work really good together. Now, one thing about, you know, tomatoes and what's one thing that some people don't know is tomatoes and, like, uh, corn, sweet corn. You plant them next to each other. They look real nice, but they attract the uh, tomato worm and the corn worm, which are essentially identical. And that, you know, of course, is nasty when you get into those worms eat your corn and the tomatoes just cut the, eat up your tomato plants. So there are some things you need to con- consider when you do the companion gardening thing. Okay. Are there any and, other uh, items that you think work really well together? Oh, I'm trying to – I don't have my list right here in front of me, I don't think, um, that has a lot of that. I was trying, I'm pretty much going off memory. But uh, I know um, beans do good next to um, beans do good next to uh, radishes and melons, uh, like cantaloupes, those type of things. Uh, watermelon's kind of out there on its own. Some people, I know I've done it. Uh, they plant near potatoes or in their potato patch, and uh, they seem that seems to have a really good um, uh, result from those two. Uh, so then there are some flowers and herbs that add in basil. Um, neck and uh, it is good next to tomatoes. Um, summer savory is excellent around onions and beans. Um, so there's so many options of that, uh, that that we get into, and that's one of the things we help people with is their companion gardening guides. Mike, that's fascinating information right there. You know, there's been this. You go to the grocery stores and you see this organic food aisles and sections now. Organic food is becoming very popular. And I got an article here in front of me that says 30, 32% of organic produce contains rocket fuel chemical, a perchlorant, a pollutant and powerful endocrine disruptor that is a key ingredient in rocket fuel, has been found in 32% of organic produce. So a lot of people are thinking, well, you know, I don't have time for the heirloom seeds and the high-yield raised bed gardening. Um, I'm just going to go out and buy it at the store. So obviously that's a fallacy. You don't have to worry about uh, these types of pollutants if you're doing your own heirloom seeds and your own raised bed gardening. That's exactly right, Mark. You know, when people when you buy the stuff in the store, you are directly reliant on how the growers grow it. And you know, and and, and I hate to say it, you know, I hate to be cynical sometimes, but sometimes the mass producers of things don't really have the best outlook for folks. Um, you know, and um, they use things, they use techniques. You know, maybe not on the organic side because they have to do some special things. But um, you know, somebody that grows tomatoes. Um, you know, what pesticides are they using? What herbicides are they using? You know, what was the big deal a couple years ago about the salmonella outbreak with the tomatoes that were being shipped in? You know, you're so reliant on uh, other people's practices and responsibilities um, when you strictly buy from that. I would suggest, you know, deal with more of a local farmer's market. Um, I know there's some Amish auctions in the area that sell produce. Um, I would be more apt to buy from them or the local 